This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Today we have a Frigidaire front-loading washing machine that is leaking due to a little bit of a hole in the bottom of this door boot. So we're going to be removing the old door boot by prying off the spring clamp here in the front and then we're going to peel back the boot here in the front. And there is a connection we have to get rid of which is this tube that hooks to the boot. We're going to get rid of the zip tie by clipping it with these sharp pliers. These are called diagonal pliers. This will snap off that zip tie and then we can get the tube out of the boot. So now the door boot is only connected with a spring that connects it to the tub and to get that off we're going to push the boot in and we're going to use a standard head screwdriver to pry off that spring tension where it's connected to the tub. So we just have to pull back a little bit on the boot and then wedge our standard head screwdriver in there and then pry it toward the silver spin basket and that'll, that'll get it loosened and then you can just pull the whole boot off. So it's a big old spring holding that on. And the next thing we need to do with the new boot, the new door gasket, is we need to use some liquid detergent to lubricate the inside rim, the part that's going to go on the tub. Otherwise, it's pretty hard to put it on. So we're putting this, this liquid detergent, I sped up the camera a little bit, inside this ring here. You can see the ring has like little holes. So right inside there, we're gonna we're gonna put some liquid detergent all the way around, and this will make it slip onto the plastic tub a lot easier. So once you get this stuff all inside that ridge, then you just want to make sure your hands are are fairly dry and you don't have any on your fingers. So the normal way that these boots are put on is to take off the front panel, but that involves a lot more disassembly and it can be done without taking off the front panel. That's what we're showing here today. It's really not too difficult. So then we're going to put in the new boot. We've got to make sure the holes are exposed here at the bottom and that means that we, we put it on correctly. We can see these little drain holes at the 6 o'clock position. I'm going to push that boot onto the plastic tub. I'm going to get that rubber ridge that I lubricated to push onto the rim of the plastic tub. And you'll feel it. It feels like it locks in. It's pretty cool. You have to use your fingers. One hand kind of guides it over and the other hand pushes that rubber firmly against that ridge until you feel like it clicks into position. And then you go a couple more inches. I'm going a little bit to the left. So one hand is guiding it in. The other one's pushing it until it locks in. I'm going to go a little more <clears throat> to the left, going up to about 7 o'clock. And then I'll go a little bit to the right, too. So I'm pushing the... Um, front part of the boot into toward the silver spin basket to make it a little bit easier to do this job. Um, otherwise it's kind of in your way, it's hard to see what you're doing. So I'm working my hand all the way around. Some people start at the 12 o'clock position and then work around to 6. I, I started at the 6 and working up to 12. Either way is okay. Just got to make sure those drain holes are on the bottom. So again, I'm just guiding it onto the rim and then pushing with the other hand. And you'll feel it. You'll feel when it locks in. It's nice. And then once you feel that, you go a few more inches. And eventually, it'll all be locked into the tub. And what holds it in is this big spring. So they recommend when you put on the spring that you use these little plastic things that come with it. But I found that these, these metal spring clamps you can get at the hardware store, really they're really cheap and they work great. But 
the little plastic things that come with the kit do not work well. Uh, they tend to they tend to fall off when you put some tension on the spring. So I'm just kind of putting the spring into the guide. I'm just showing you here how the plastic things are designed to work, but they don't they don't stay when you put some pressure on them. These things work really good. So I'm grabbing with this thing over the boot and over the plastic rim. It's squeezing down and then I'm going to push in so that the back of this clamp pushes against the inside front panel and it's really in there. It's really locked. And I don't have to worry about that spring coming loose. Now I can work it over to about maybe 10 o'clock and then I'll grab another one. I need to have two of these. Looks like I'm going a little further over to about 9 o'clock and I'll put in another clamp. And then I can use my two hands to finish putting the spring. I can pull it down all the way around to 6 o'clock. So here's the other spring clamp goes in and I push it in until the back of it locks against the front panel. Now it's really secure. And I can use my two hands to just finish off putting on the spring. It's a fair amount of tension. So I'm going to push down, feed it in with my left hand, push down with my right, feed it in with my left, go a little further, a little further. It's interesting that when you get near the end here, it actually gets easier. The, ten the tension uh, somehow reduces, I guess because the spring gets stretched. So I'm just making sure I'm pushing in with my left hand into the rubber groove in the door boot. And then once you think you got it, just feel around and make sure that you can feel that the spring is in that rubber groove all the way around. And then you can take off the spring clamps. If you don't have these spring clamps, you could get someone to help you hold them, but it's it's a fair amount of tension. I, I'd advise you to try to get these clamps. They're pretty standard at most hardware stores. I got these at uh, Osh Supply Hardware. I think Ace would have them. Home Depot would have them. There we go. And then we'll take off the clamps. And that's the only real tricky part of this procedure. With the front panel off, it's actually easier to do. Um, if you don't take off the front panel, it's faster, but a little trickier, and I would advise you to have some clamps. I'm just feeling and making sure it's really in there. It feels good. Got it. And now we're going to hook that plastic tube back up to the uh, boot. Here's a better look at what the clamp looks like. So I'm going to put a little lubrication inside this part of the boot and then I'll feed the plastic tube in there. And then you can put a zip tie around it to hold it or in this case I used a hose clamp to hold it. Either one will work fine. Uh, zip tie is a little bit cheaper. Just make sure you get it really, really snug because that's what's going to keep that fill tube in there. So I'm using a little, little hose clamp. Some people also uh, replace these door boots because they get that really bad black mold. It smells bad, it looks bad. And you can replace it for that reason too. We do advise people to keep the door open in between uses so that they get some air circulation. And that air circulation tends to retard or keep the black mold from, from forming. If you have the door closed though, it's a perfect environment for the mold. It's nice and warm and moist. So I'm just feeding the rubber boot onto the rim of the front panel. Same kind of same concept. You push with the left hand's guiding it into position, and the right hand is the right thumb is just pushing it in until it is secure.
There we go. And we're going to put a little lubrication on the spring clamp. And that really makes a big difference. If you don't have that on there, it's actually pretty hard to put on. But with that lubrication, it goes on really easy. So I'm going to put it at the 12 o'clock position into the rim. And I'm going to use my two hands to bring them down to about 7 o'clock and 5 o'clock. And then I'll push down to expand the spring. And I'll get the metal spring over to the 6 o'clock position. Sometimes you can use a standard head screwdriver to help you pry it over. So we got it. That's in nice and secure. And that's it. And you can just take it for a test, make sure it doesn't leak. So I hope that's been helpful to you. And I hope you get a chance to subscribe to our channel and like the video. And please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.